one of the most versatile and affordable wireless video transmission systems on the market. But is it any good? Let's review this. These are Shimbo Z600S HDMI and SDI video transmitter and receiver and Z600M 5.5 inch monitor with built-in receiver and transmitter capabilities and 1000 nits of brightness. The kit is pretty simple, you get your TX and RX modules and a USB-C cable. But at least inside the box you have a very nicely cut out foam, so you can carry those things in this box. The build quality is pretty nice, partially metal, partially plastic. On the bottom we have one quarter 20 and on the side we have a USB Type-C port, 5V for powering this up, HDMI and SDI in and out, also one more quarter 20 on the side as well as the power switch and on the back the NPF battery slot and the eject button. I really like that we have two quarter 20s on the receiver and transmitter and also it has passive cooling system so it's completely silent. There is a display and three buttons to control the unit itself on both TX and RX. And the first little disadvantage that I've noticed is that the RX and TX they turn for a pretty long time. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds for them to boot up and to pair. The screens are pretty simple and easy to use and navigate and I really enjoy the weight of those two units. It's only 160 grams per unit. Love it. So guys, if you long press the left button, you'll be able to update this um, RX for instance or TX, it doesn't really matter, uh, via the USB Type-C. Then if you press and hold the middle button, you'll go into the settings, you can change uh, the setting with the left and right button, and then the middle button will uh, pick the setting you want, you can choose pairing to pair in manual mode if you uh, for some reason don't have automatic pairing. Also you can have a look at the best and the worst channels available in the menu and if you long press the right button you'll see a QR code which you can use to pair it with a monitor or with a smartphone or tablet. On the TX module we have a little bit different settings, for instance here we have the quality setting, you can pick between different uh, settings like quality, normal, smooth, uh, you'll have different um, bit rates in those but a lower latency, so it's up to you which one to pick. And we have a trigger mode as well, so it's a nice addition here. So guys, if you're interested, here are the full specs of both TX and RX modules for input and output, so it's basically 1080p 60Hz. As you can see on the display, here we have the quality and the frame rate, as well as the format, the quality, so we have the best video quality possible with a bit bigger latency. And as you can see guys, this system is pretty much compact, it's not the smallest NPF battery I have, but with this battery we'll have almost indefinite battery life and we have several options on how to mount this transmitter to the camera. And now guys, let's have a look at the monitor ZO600M, it has dual battery slots, a quarter 20, and it weighs only 300 grams, it's really lightweight, and also it's almost silent, I don't think it even has uh, a fan in it. So we have HDMI in and out, you can loop the signal, we have headphones, the DC in, you can power it with the DC as well, and on the other side we have a USB Type-C port and a micro SD card. I'll tell you in a bit why you need it. Unfortunately the monitor boots up also for a pretty long time, around 10 seconds, but it's okay because I use Atomos Ninja 5 and it also boots up for a very long time. And in the kit you'll find a 32 gig V10 uh, micro SD card and you can use this card to record the HDMI feed. It's not the best quality but it does work as a backup recording function or just recording your straight HDMI feed with all of the information like ISO, shutter, picture profile etc like I do on my Ninja 5. And on top of the monitor we have the power button and three customizable function buttons. So here is my little setup, wireless completely, so I have my camera set up at the left and it's pointing at the right as you can see right here. So it gets the signal from the camera and via the transmitter it transmits the signal to the receiver built into the monitor. And now let's have a look what this monitor can do. So at the top left we have our input setting, it says wireless, our first antenna, and also the monitor acts as a receiver right now, RX. 
We have our feed 1080p 50, the micro SD card and the battery life. Here are all the functions, we'll have a look at those and the audio monitoring capabilities, as well as the main menu button. So if we hit the menu button, we can see that this display is highly customizable. It's a bit overexposed because it's very bright, more than a thousand nits. So let's dim it down a little bit. Let's put it to about 50%, let me say. So in the function menu, we see all the functions of customizable function buttons 1, 2 and 3. And I've set the first button to be false color tool because I use it on a daily basis almost all the time. Button 2 will allow me to pinch to zoom. So it's basically a zoom function. When it's disabled, you cannot pinch to zoom. So let's go back and turn it off. As you can see, a little loop on the top of the monitor is disappearing. And button number 3 starts recording. It has a small delay, but you can set this recording to be triggered via your camera and it records to the micro SD card. It's not the best video quality, but still guys, as a backup, it's a very cool addition. So here we have the input source menu. So the input could be set to HDMI with the cord and also to a wireless receiving system. So you can use this little QR code with your app on the mobile device like phone or something to connect to this device when it's working as a TX. Then a pretty standard set of waveforms, RGB parade, histogram, and vectroscope, but they all have very good quality and pretty good size as well. Under this little flag, we have different markers, so you can use the anamorphic disk quiz mode, by the way. So the markers are pretty standard, but the anamorphic disk quiz is a very welcome addition because I do use anamorphic lenses a lot, and you can turn it on or off by toggling the switch. In the next menu, we have the classic focus picking and the zoom function. In the next one, we have zebras, full color and monochrome mode. And the next menu is made for your custom LUT. You can upload a LUT to your SD card and apply to a log footage in this monitor your LUT, whether it's wireless or not. Also, it has an HDR mode with PQ color and you can adjust the color of the monitor itself, but I use user uh, interface because I have adjusted this monitor to be kind of similar in terms of colors to my Ninja 5. And here is my LUT, which I use all the time. Also, it has a teleprompter kind of mode or menu, but nah, I don't care, <laughs> I don't really use it. And here is the recording mode, so you can pick your trigger, your time code, and so on and you can lock down this monitor as well so all in all i really do like the layout and the functions and in the system menu you can also pick the tx mode or rx mode so if this monitor works as a receiver in rx mode or as a transmitter in tx mode so it'll turn off kind of switch the modes and after that you will have to boot it again here is this monitor on an actual shoot, acting as a wireless monitor for my model in the frame to have a look at her, how she looks in the frame. And I really enjoyed using this monitor. It had zero issues, almost instant pairing. And all in all, it's a very nice thing to do with your client because the client sees immediately how it looks and basically uh, appreciates it. And now guys, it's time for the range test, both for the TXRX themselves, also for the monitor and also for my iPhone connected to the transmitter. So guys, right now we're going to make a range test first with the monitor slash receiver. It's acting as a receiver right now and the transmitter is right here. I have my POV camera right here and let's see how big the range is. Uh, first, we are doing it in a sterile environment in the forest and later on we're going to be going into the building with a lot of Wi-Fi frequencies and so on and see how it does in this more interference uh, sphere. So, let's go! By the way, guys, I forgot to mention that this system has 600 feet of range. It's about 150 meters, if I'm not mistaken. So, let's have a look how it does. So guys, I can still see myself and I hope you can hear me as well. We have, st we still have the signal. I see a lady passing by, so it's more than 50 meters, I guess, and it's working flawlessly. So guys, I'm coming back because I'm kind of worried for my camera. And as you saw, it's about 100 meters, maybe 80 meters with good signal, with no... Uh, how do you say it's in English? No lag, 
no stuttering. So basically, if you work on the field without any interference, probably in the forest, you'll get around, let me say, 80 meters of stable signal with this transmitter and monitor acting as a receiver right here. It's a good result, I'm impressed. So now guys, we're testing the receiver and transmitter themselves. As you can see, I have the transmitter right here, the receiver right here, and my Atomos Ninja 5 is acting just like as a reference monitor. So we'll be able to see if it has some lag with this POV camera. So guys, I'm about 40 to 50 meters away. I'm waving my hand to you, but my monitor Atomos Ninja 5 got frozen a little bit. So it's dropping frames dramatically. It's like minus 10 degrees Celsius out here. So as I see right now, it's doing okay. So let's move further. So that was about 100 meters away with some stuttering. Around 70 meters, it was pretty much clean and flawless. So my conclusion is that um, till about 70 meters in this condition in the forest with trees blocking the signal a little bit and my body also blocking the signal We get pretty decent performance and it's more than enough for me because I don't shoot like through I don't know hundreds of meters away So thumbs up for it. Jimbal did a great job And now guys, let's test the capabilities of your mobile device connected to the monitor that is made by Shimbal of course, we don't have a lot applied in here because we get clean HDMI feed and I hope that they will include with the firmware update the ability to add a lot straight to your Apple or Android device. Well, some dogs are barking pretty loudly, guys. Sorry for that. So let's test this out. So now, guys, I'm about 20 to 25 meters away. And as you can see, we have some dropped frames. But still, it's working pretty good, in my opinion, considering that it's just a mobile device. It's not a proper receiver transmitter thing. So yeah, it's, it's doing okay. Not the best performance, but what do you expect from such a device? And guys, here is the image quality difference, the brightness difference. I guess they look pretty much similar. I've adjusted them a little bit. Atomos is a bit more warm, but it's easily adjustable on the Shimbal monitor. So yeah, it's doing a good job. So now guys, we're in the building inside of it and I have my clock set right here so you can see that something is moving in the shot. I'm also recording into the monitor. It has the recording capabilities to a micro SD card and you'll be able to see if we have some drop frames and you'll see how I go into the stairs and going up or down th uh, through the stairs with my POV camera. So let's go. So guys, now I'm about 20 to 15 meters away with a lot of Wi-Fi frequencies all around the flats right here. And as you can see, guys, everything is working properly, no lag. So let's go to the stairs. So guys, as you saw, we are unable to record right now. We have no signal, so the concrete walls are unbeatable in this term. It's a lot of concrete and a lot of different blocking walls, like tons of walls basically, so I'm not really surprised. And of course, I've locked myself and I have to go downstairs to go out of here. So the battery life of this system is really great. You can get more than 10 hours of battery life with 5200 mAh and PF batteries. And it's almost indefinite recording and transmitting the signal. With the monitor it's a bit worse, but it's much better than with the Atomos Ninja 5, like 50-80% to 80 longer and you can get up to 3 hours with 5200 mAh and PF battery. And it has dual NPF battery slots by the way, so it can work from batteries like all day long. And don't forget that you can use Use the DC input or the USB-C to power those devices. So now let's have a look at the latency of those devices. Here we have the timer itself, also Sony A7S III recording and also the straight HDMI feed to Ninja 5, the A6300 straight recording on the screen and also the Shimbal monitor acts as a receiver in this case and the latency is claimed to be 80 milliseconds and up to 120 milliseconds in noisy RF environment. Keep that in mind guys. But all in all, let's pause the video and have a look at different values. So here we have the real-time image, it's like 35.03, then the A7S III screen 34.93, A6300 also 34.93, 
Then the Ninja V recording, almost no latency, 34.93 as well. And on the Shimbal we can see that it has 34.78, so it has some latency, but it's nothing too crazy, guys. I think it's more than, um, you know, enough for my needs in terms of uh, wireless transmission systems. And both in transmitter mode and receiver mode, the Shimbal monitor gets you around 80 milliseconds or 120 milliseconds in noise environments. So now guys, it's time to talk about the price and competition of this system. So Shimbal Z0600S SDI and HDMI wireless video transmission system on B&H sells for $420. Is it a lot? Not really, because the closest competitor is $500 and it has huge antennas as well. And it's also from not very popular Chinese brand. And if we have a look at something more uh, noticeable, let me say the Axum company, it has $520 pack, but before it was $650. And then we have one of the best kind of budget systems on the market. I have a review of this system as well, Holland Mars 400S. It costs six hundred dollars so basically you save 180 dollars buying the shimbal system over this hololand mars 400 s pro and then if we have a look at the shimbal monitor with wireless receiver and transmitter built in it costs 370 dollars but now let's have a look at its closest competitor and it's a monitor from vaxis atom it costs 520 dollars and it's $150 difference for basically the same device. And even if you are looking for a good 1000 nits monitor, and I can definitely say that Shimbo as a monitor is a great value. But let's compare it to another great monitor without even the recording capabilities and transmitters and receivers built in. It's Atomos Shinobi 5 inch monitor. It costs $300. So basically, if you add to Shinobi just $70, you'll get almost the same quality display also 1000 nits of brightness but also the transmitting and receiving capabilities that's an awesome deal guys to be honest to conclude for the price this is the most versatile and multifunctional wireless video system i've ever used and definitely one of the best on the market right now yes the boot time might be a little slow Yes, you might never have heard of the Shimbal company. But other than that, I'm more than satisfied with the results of both Z0600S RX and TX kits and especially with the Z0600M monitor. And if you want to buy your first wireless video transmitter and receiver, I highly recommend you paying attention to Shimbal systems. So what do you think of it guys and which system do you use? Please feel free to share all of your thoughts down in the description below. And if you did enjoy this video, smash the like and subscribe bottles and the notifications bell. See you in the next video guys. Take care. Bye.